Okay, so this is the Sungo Power 6000 watt 24 volt Invergo charger. I have it set up in the shop here with my two Linac LiPo 4 batteries in series. So that is 25.6 volts at 200 amp hours. And we're going to do some tests today. Primarily I want to focus on its ability to run a table saw and its ability to be used as a UPS. So that is an uninterruptible power supply. So if your house loses power, you don't want sensitive electronics like your computer to shut off. So first of all, let's take a look at this unit. It measures 25.6 times 9.1 times 7.5 inches and it weighs 76.7 pounds. It's a pretty hefty unit. Um, this particular inverter charger is a 6000 watt 24 volt unit, but they also offer 12 and 48 volt versions. It comes with a temperature sensor, so it can read the temperature of the batteries, and it also comes with the remote, so you can access it from a distance. This is a pure sine wave inverter, and you can set it up to either provide 120 volts or 240 volts. So on the table here we have a switch, a 200 amp breaker, and a shunt to measure the current and voltage. I mean, this is a stripped down test setup, not the way you might use it for a real situation. But for example, this size setup could easily run a computer for days or you could use it for intermittent power outages. Now, one nice feature about this unit is the auto generator start feature. So it detects if the batteries are low um, and it can auto start a generator. So let's say you have it plugged in and it's been drawing from the batteries, but then the batteries are going down and you don't want to you know, lose power. So it, it senses that, it starts the generator. I mean, if your generator enables auto start, that is. And it makes it really great for like mission critical setups. I mean, not necessarily something you'd probably use for an RV, but more for critical home and business operations. So, the first test here is using this setup to run my SawStop Professional 3 horsepower table saw. This is a high wattage test because the initial startup of a motor like this draws a lot of power. When I started the SawStop, the watts out of the battery shunt recorded near or over 7000 watts. Then once it started up, it runs at about 1200 watts and then cutting. And then when cutting, it goes to about 2000 watts. Um, you can see that the real issue here is the motor startup. In one test, it pulled over 8,000 watts, um, and it just varies. So you need the inverter to be able to deliver those kinds of numbers. This model says it can do 18,000 watts for a short time. So it will pretty much deal with things like well pumps, large dust collectors, pretty much anything where one device pulls a lot at startup. I tested the unit with simpler things too, like a 1,500 watt heater running at 120 volts. Of course, that worked fine. Um, this model gives you the option of drawing either 120 or 240 volts. But in order to use it as a battery charger, you must have a 240 volt input. This only makes sense to be able to deliver a steady 6,000 watts. It is the equivalent of a 30 amp, 240 volt outlet, like a level two EV charger. Um, now just sitting idle in non-power saving mode, it draws about 80 watts or so. But when I was using the 1500 watt heater on high, it was drawing about 1600 watts from the battery. The efficiency was very good since it used just about the same power at idle to power the heater. Now using it as a battery charger, in my tests, um, when you use it as a charger, you can get up to 90 amps or so at 24 volts, which is about 2200 watts. Um, which you can adjust to as low as around 16 to 18 amps at 24 volts, which is about 400 watts. So that's the lowest you can bring in to the batteries, uh, which is nice so you don't overtax the circuit. I did a few tests as well using it as a UPS. And yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. So as you can see here, I have a Raspberry Pi plugged into the monitor and it's currently playing a video from Sangle Power about this generator. You can kind of listen, you can hear it in the background. So I have it plugged into an extension cord here, which is plugged into the inverter. Now this is currently hooked up to the wall. I mean, I also have batteries here, but it's hooked up to the wall currently. Now let's pull the plug to this whole um, inverter battery setup. And as you can hear, there was no interruption. So um, it played it fine and it switched over to, to the batteries. So it worked out really great as a 
a UPS system. I mean, this would be really great if, for example, you have critical servers and you can't have any power interruption at all. Or like, I mean, if you're running like a CNC, for example, then it's critical not to have that interrupted. Or running a well pump, a sump pump or some other device, you know, it's nice to consider the concept of self-sufficiency and to be prepared in case of an emergency. But so thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.